Welcome to the 40K Shop Talk podcast, broadcasting live from the Manufactorum. I'm your host, Austin, joined by my co-host, Rob. Join us as we talk shop about new codexes, units, army lists, and general strategies. It's 40K related, if you're here. How you doing tonight? We'll just get started, and uh, we're going to talk tonight about some succubuses. So, new Drakari Codex. Uh... Some nasty looking builds. Uh, I'm just gonna go over some builds and let's just talk through some stuff. So, uh, you want to kick us off with the basics for the succubus and why this lady is so nasty? Yeah. So um, today we want to talk about succubuses and why everybody is talking about them. Um, I mean, the main reason, the amount of points that you're gonna spend on a succubus and what they can do for your army, is outrageous. I mean, we're talking, these things are called blenders for a reason. Oh, they're, yeah. they're fast, uh, they hit hard, but they're really fragile. And the coolest part about these succubuses in the new codex is there's tons of different builds that you can do that all of them have some sort of viability. Uh, right now, everybody's talking about the uh, Cult of Strife succubus options. Um, so... I think that's probably the best place to start. What do you think, Austin? Yeah, that's cool. Let's just start. Let's dig in there. It's the newest. It's uh, it's the hottest. So, right. So, uh, so so just a couple things here. First, uh, the basic cult of strife options that you have here for their obsession is, uh, at the start of the fight phase, if a unit with this obsession is in engagement range of an enemy unit, it can fight first in the phase. Uh, I think everybody's aware yes. that the uh, the option to fight first with all your stuff is is a really strong ability. Uh, the only thing that makes this better is the ability to make other units fight last, which is very prevalent in this book as well. Uh, each time you, the second part of their obsession is each time you declare a charge move with this unit, uh, with this obsession, if there are no other units fr uh, from your army within engagement range of any enemy unit selected as the targets of that charge, add one to your charge roll. So in essence, you know, these, these witches get plus one to their charge as long as they're the only unit charging into that squad. There's no other unit already in engagement range. Uh, that's so, all what? Base eight, base eight inch move, right? Uh, yeah, that's fast. correct. They're, yeah. Well, and keep in mind that uh, after turn two, they can all uh, advance and charge, which, oh, yeah, that's true. So. I mean, we're talking eight inches plus D6 for, I don't know, average of. Yeah. 12 some inches Fast. most of the time. Uh, and then you throw on top of that another plus one. Uh, they they should be in a raider if you're playing them right. I mean, yeah. tack on another three inches from your disembark. Man. I mean, there, it's really easy to see why the Cult of Strife stuff is really good before we even start looking at um, the options that the Cult of Strife give you, especially with the, the new book, Warzone Caradon. Yeah, definitely. Um, their uh, warlord trait for there is uh, anytime you roll a non-modified hit roll of six, you get two additional hits. I don't think that's a great take. Uh, I think there's a lot of other better options here, especially if you're going to build a really powerful witch. But you know, anytime you're scoring additional hits on sixes, I mean, it's not terrible. But I don't know. I, I again, there's yeah. so many better options here. Uh, I mean, exploding sixes has been there forever for right. so much stuff in this game. So it's a good fallback. But if you can do better, I mean, I take better. Yeah, and and there's there's two options that that we're gonna look at here in a minute that just blow this thing out of the water. Anyway, uh, their relic that they have, um, they're the file of Buket. I'm not quite sure if that's pronounced right, but the Cult of Strife Succubus. Um, model only reroll d6 at the start of each battle round until the end of that battle round the bear gains the associated combat drug so if you're familiar with witches they all get combat drugs uh the way they change this in the new codex is that you can either pick one or you can randomly roll for two uh, there's other ways that you can manipulate this with the witch cults uh there's like a warlord trait where you can get two additional ones so you could be rolling for four combat drugs oh man yeah, there's there's a lot of different things that you can do with that. Um, but again, you know, it, some of those things might be fun, but I don't think uh, you're really going to want to do that in some sort of competitive build, or if you're really trying to maximize what your witch is going to do. But that being said, I mean, there's so many different options that you could just have fun with. I mean, I'm rolling 
for four. I'm rolling for two. I'm doubling them with strats. We'll get into it, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I think also, there's some fun I, stuff there. If you read it, and, and we could talk about that one uh, too, if you want, but I, th- I believe it says that you reroll sixes too. So you're basically limiting yourself <laughs> to one through five. <laughs> Oh no! I, I could think be you're wrong because right, I think there's not enough values on the table or something. Well, no, the six is a uh, plus one ballistic skill. Oh yeah, plus one leadership. I think. I need to go find that. Yeah, but it's. Yeah. For, yeah, we can look at that here in a second. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you could, and then there's a stratagem that you can use that doubles it for a turn. The hyper. Yeah, the backlash thing. Um, I mean, you could you could make her like a, a stemmed out drug junkie if you really want to. Uh, so I like my witch. <laughs> their uh, their base stratagem for the cult of strife is probably, I would say, the best witch stratagem out of all the the witch cults. Uh, for two CP, you can basically select a witch unit to to fight again in that battle round. Uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, so th- I mean, that's just double the attacks, right? Yeah. It's crazy. Especially with what you can do with these ladies. Like, uh, I mean, they, they get really crazy real quick. And, uh, I mean, you could use this on your regular witches too. There's, mm-hmm. there's so many applications for this. Uh, but let's, uh, let's look at some of the builds here. Like, I want to start with one that's just straight out of the, the core book here first um, with the All Cult right. of Strife. Yeah. And... The, the first thing you're going to do is uh, I would argue that upgrading them to the uh, upgrading the witch cult spectacle for the show stealer is really good. Um, you're going to add to the points, obviously, but the option to be able to, uh, well, I guess I'll explain it real quick. The show stealer allows you to consolidate an additional three inches. Uh, so for a total of six inches after yeah. you finish, uh, you know your close combat attacks but the the catch here is that you don't have to end your move closer to the closest enemy model so you can pile out of combat if you want to or you could pile into a different combat like yep. there's so many that's options huge. here uh that just make this a, a really good option um especially if you're trying to protect your succubus you know if you want to go and hit something but you don't necessarily want to hit you back uh yep you know so that you know, there's some downsides. You got to make sure that you can do something. You have something there, pre- preferentially like a raider that she can kind of hide behind. That's going to block for. Her. I mean, you're you're talking about just this is just getting out of combat. This is old school hit and run, right? Um, I mean, it's it's in my opinion better than hit and run because old school yeah. hit and run, and uh, I mean, we still have hit and run with the Hellions in this book, but it just yeah. hit and run allows you to just fall out of combat and then charge back in later that turn. So that's all hit and run does. This is closer to like the shining spears stratagem that allows them to like charge in attack, pop your stratagem with the shining spears and fall back out of combat, making them insane, insanely brutal. Dang. Um, but I think this makes her really good as well. Um, so you, so you also, okay. So with that, you, let's say you fight first, right? Or you pick her first, you charge in with her mm-hmm. and you charge in with another unit, like a unit of witches. Right. And you use her, this ability to bounce out of combat and then they're stuck fighting the witches. Correct. Yeah. This and then is you solid. gotta, you gotta keep in mind that the witches also have, uh, they're like razor flails and Chardonnay impalers and all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, the Chardonnay impaler basically will keep a unit from falling out of combat with, with that unit. So it's another reason that you can keep your witches safe. Uh, we can talk about, there's a relic in the uh, Cult of Strife book that allows you to ha- auto succeed against that uh, fallback roll. So basically you can lock down a unit and there's nothing they can do about it. Uh, but more importantly, like I was saying, is if you like charge up with like a raider or just get a raider up there close, not even charging range, Having a raider there so she falls back out next to the raider keeps her safe from enemies targeting her. Oh, yeah, that's enemies. good. That's pretty smart, yeah. Yeah. So, nice. I mean, there's some there's some tricky plays you can do here with her. So um, it's just, what, an upgrade? Just pay points? You yeah, pay it's, points it's, just, it's 15 yeah. points on top of her already, I think, 65 points. Uh, yeah. Let me double check. No, 60 points. So, 75 points total for this uh, HQ. Which is insanely cheap for for yeah. what she can do. Uh, when you pay for the witch cult spectacle, you get access to the warlord trait. Um, it's called uh, dancers. Uh, nope, whirling death. Uh, so this is kind of cool. 
I could see in certain metas this being extremely useful, especially like heavy chaff armies. Mm -hmm. uh, what it allows you to do is you can forego any of your attacks and your attack becomes three plus the number of enemy models with engagement range of two inches. So mm. if you're playing an army that has a lot of like, I don't know, guardsmen or 20 man squads of cultists, yep. uh, things like that, you know, people that you yep. see, Something like this could be very cool, especially since uh, she can do something really tricky where uh, for one CP, the Cult of Strife, they can it basically ignore enemy models, kind of like a flip belt. So when you charge in, you could charge into the center of a, like a big unit of boys or something like imagine 30 boys on the table and you charge oh, into, yeah. the, into the center of it. Yeah, you could be having, that's some like, Harlequin shit there. That's awesome. Yeah, you, you, I can't imagine how many attacks that you could get with that. It's yeah. crazy. So, okay, so so this lady starts with six base, right? So we're talking about, at a minimum, starting with six. So for that to pay off, right, three models within two inches? I mean, come on. Right, that's, yeah, I mean. That's going to be there to tell like a lot of Marines. It's cool, and it, there's definitely uses for it, especially if you, you know, have a buddy who plays, like, an orc army or a guard army or, yeah. I mean, I don't know, June Sealer Cole, anything that, that has a lot of, lot of models, uh, there's some potential there. But, you know, it's still not as going to be as good as some of the other ones we're going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The other, the you also get a relic with the Witch Cult Spectacle. It's called Dancer's Edge. Um, each time an attack is made with this weapon, on mod unmodified wound roll of six, and vulnerable saving throws cannot be taken against this. Uh, it's plus two strength, minus four AP, two damage. So basically, any sixes that you get, okay. the chances that your opponent's going to have any kind of save against it is probably not slim to none. Strength so that's two, yeah. So you're five base then, right? So because these these are all elves, so you know we're talking strength, strength three. three base, yeah. Okay. So minus strength four five, means minus. that you're you're stripping pretty much everybody of their armor. If yeah. you roll sixes, ignoring invulnerable saves, that's you know it's pretty cool. Actually, this this weapon is not terrible. I could see uses for this. Yeah, I could see that being good if there was some bonuses to wound, which I don't know. We'll get to at some point, but if you can get a plus one well, to wound on that, it is that an could unmodified be nasty. six. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I think they did away with all that anyway, didn't they? Right. This edition, yeah. So. All right, okay, so so maybe. Bare Bones, she's got some play. So that's like, that's a good starting point. Yep. Uh, so let's let's talk about the first build. And this is, I think, the standard one that you're going to see a lot of people use. Uh, so this is Cult of Strife, directly out of the book. Uh, like I said, we so we start off with our six base attacks, right? And then yep. um, we take, there's the Warlord trait that you're going to want to take. It's called Precision Blows. If you're not familiar with what it does, basically any unmodified hit rolls of six um, for a melee attack by this Warlord, the target unit suffers a number of mortal wounds equal to the damage characteristic of the weapon used for that attack. Oh, no. And then the attack sequence <laughs> ends. All right, okay, sure. You don't get your... Opinion. Right, so you, so, so you mm -hmm. just get, like, uh, in, in, so which is, you know, they're their damage is one um there's a couple you could take like a chardonnay and impaler that has a damage of two uh but i think what you're going to see is the the triptych whip and yeah. what this does is it gives you three additional attacks in addition to it's a poison two plus weapon so a strength user minus three ap and it does two damage so now any sixes two that you're able to hit are going to be two mortal wounds oh no and your six attacks now become nine attacks. <laughs> and then since you get to pick your combat drug, I would recommend you take the plus one attack on charge. So you're now you're sitting there on 10 attacks. All right. I'm starting gonna, to be impressed. You're going to hit on twos. Yep. Uh, if it's turn three or later, you'll hit on two or you'll hit on twos with a plus one. So if anybody yep. has like a minus one to hit, you know, you kind of ignore all that. Yep. You hit on twos, you wound on twos. Oh, Minus man. three AP, two damage. So wait, why do you wound on twos? Well, because it's a poison two plus weapon. Oh, the relic makes it two plus. Holy right. crap! Right. So you hit on twos, you wound on twos. Minus three AP for two damage. You have ten attacks base. Yeah. You could pop um, the hyper stim backslash uh, backlash to to double that damage, or I'm sorry, to double the drug effect. So you could have eleven attacks on the charge. Um, and then you could spend. And then you could spend um, the two more CP to make her fight twice. So the mortals is the warlord trait, 
Right, that's what gives you the mortals on precision on strikes. Correct. So any six that she rolls on, you know, eleven attacks, we're going to do mortals. So, so this is. It, I think that's a pretty good build. Um, that's a pretty good build. <laughs> if you don't like fishing for sixes to hit, which some people might yeah. not like, uh, you could also always take Quicksilver Fighter on the same build, which basically instead of on sixes you do two mortal wounds, now you get two more attacks. So, man, you're basically Good looking at five additional attacks, six on the charge. So you could basically make yep. a witch with twelve attacks. You know, hitting on twos, wounding on twos, minus three two damage. I mean, she's gonna put in work no matter what. I could easily see her taking out uh, like a primary squad by herself. Um, pop two CP, make her attack again. Oh man, yeah, at two um, damage, everything changes. That being two damage is just crazy. Right. Now, personally, I like fishing for the sixes for the mortal wounds because I think that the uh, yeah the ability to like I don't know, man. Let's say you just get one good roll in there and you get like three sixes and just yep. dunk a character without even trying. I think that's pretty cool. Oh, man. Um, yeah. I always say it too. Like this edition is all about like exploding upper end of the curve, right? So like mm -hmm. when you roll sixes, when you roll hot in this GW game. It feels ridiculous. Everything just goes off the rails. So, like, why not lean into it? You know. All right now, here's something I was thinking cool. about earlier, and I, I want your opinion on this. So, you can heroically intervene in your own turn, correct? Oh man, uh, yeah. No, not anymore. Not anymore. Did they get rid of that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, then there I goes that. Because I was kind of thinking, like, man, if you get close enough on your run move with, with the succubus, maybe you choose not to charge so that you yeah. heroically intervene into a squad, and then you get another six-inch move. And then you could try to bypass that um, only attacking units you charged rule. And since she's yeah. strife, she would already attack first anyway. So I was thinking, man, that would be kind of a cool way to get around not being able to kind of attack two separate units in the same combat phase. Hmm. I mean, you. Where's the fight first come from? Just her. That's her basic cult, cult trait. Cult of strife. Yeah, always fights first. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, dude, there is so much in fighting first this edition too. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I'll look, I'll look it up real quick, but I'm almost positive uh, you can't do it anymore. I, I think you're right, and I, I know that used to be a thing back in the day that people would do. Um, yep. And they would do that to get around. Overwatch. Now, I guess Overwatch isn't as big of a deal as it is anymore, but... Yeah. Uh, let's see. From what I can see here, um, it looks like it has to be in... Let's see. Yeah, they, the way that they word it in, uh, in, the, in the charge phase is uh, the second step in the charge phase is opening it up for your opponent to activate heroic interventions. Yeah, and that makes so, sense. Yeah, so they locked that now. But yeah, I remember some jank with that. Last edition, the one before, whatever it was. That was crazy. So I think that's um, mm -hmm. kind of the two, and I say two because you could kind of take either one of these these Warlord traits, and and I think they're both going to be very competitive. Yeah. Um, personally, I, I like this build a lot. Uh, I think it has a lot of... Uh, upside to it it can do a lot of damage um i think precision blows is a great warlord trait uh but i do i do want to quickly talk about another option with cult of strife and that's going to be coming out of the warzone uh Sheridan book i got a question before we leave the main codex for that um sure. the first warlord trait we talked about this blender in the middle of the york squad or whatever this dream one yeah that's changing your base number of attacks to three right so you're going from six to three, but you're still getting the three from the whip, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, I would think so. Let me let me double so check that. So if you don't like fishing for sixes, and you play against a bunch of horde stuff, you go down three attacks, but you still get the bonus from the weapons and whatever else we were talking about, drugs or doubling up the combat drugs. So, I mean. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, so it says each time your Warlord fights, after any pile of moves until the fight phase is resolved, you can choose for its attacks characteristic to be equal to three plus the number of any models within two inches of it. Yeah. So... I mean, that... I, I, I still like that. I still think that's a solid Warlord trait. I think this... this uh, 
I think this lady's going to shine against hordes, and I would lean into that maybe. I don't know. It's pretty cool. Yeah, There's it's, a lot a, of good stuff it's here. an interesting. I'd be curious to see if something like that is covered in the FAQ. Yeah. Because uh, this hmm. uh, says each time the bear is selected to fight, add three to that characteristics until the end of the phase. So it's this is adding three when you're selected to fight. Choose for its attack characteristic to be equal to three. Let's see. After the piling moves, you change it to three. So I could see potentially this overriding that. I don't. I could see an argument there. I think it's yeah. tricky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but man, if you could. So fight. Ha uh, so it says you select. So I'm just. I just got the rules here. I'm pulling them up. So it says that step one is select a unit to fight, and step two is pile in. So it looks like. Uh, Step one, the whip gives you three. Step two, after pile ins, then you ch choose to be three. So it looks like you right. would stomp it. So I don't even think yeah, that. Yeah. I, I would. I could see that the ruling being that, like the plus one on the charge, the the whip, like the four extra attacks would get lost in this. Yeah, I think I think it would. Yeah. Never mind. Scratch that. Let's go to the better but book. I, I I still I still don't think. I mean, look, being able to like teleport into like a, a a big heavy meaty squad i mean you're still probably gonna get i mean let's be honest like as soon as you have seven models within two inches you're gonna get 10 yeah. attacks Dang. like i think this is a sleeper trait i really like this one but let's keep going sure all right pulling out the other book here real quick so uh i really like i like this next build um, now there's some questions around how this will actually work, but I don't think regardless of how it works, I think both, it doesn't matter. It's going to be good. So let's All take right. a look here. Okay. So, uh, for the supplement for cult of strife, there is a warlord trait called competitive edge. So each time a warlord fights, uh, if all the attacks target one enemy unit, after resolving all of those attacks, it can make a number of additional attacks against that enemy unit equal to the number of attacks that did not reach the inflict damage step of the attack sequence during the fight phase. Now, I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, basically what that says is, if I miss to hit, if I miss to wound, or if my opponent saves, I basically get a reroll or, or get an additional attack. Um I don't think this counts against ignoring wounds, like a 5++ plus plus ignore. I don't think that matters. So I guess it depends oh, when the damage step is. Okay, well, I can look at that. Um, that's I, believe, I believe the inflict damage step happens, and then you roll for the ignoring. I think that's, that's what it is. That's why like, I inflict two damage to you, and then you roll two dice to ignore it. Yeah, I think you're right, because it goes, you know, you allocate the attack, you make the saving throw, and then you choose to inflict the damage. Right. So, I mean, to me, oh, this... Here, here it says, actually, uh, well, now, let's see, hold on. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, okay, I think we're right. Never mind, I think we're right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But even so, to me, this says you're basically getting a model that can reroll hits, reroll wounds, and reroll saves successful saves kind of uh it's it's different and i really like this rule i think i don't i can't think of a single army that has something like this yeah this that's super unique, unique. yeah, yeah. I like and, and i think i think it's cool personally i think it's especially cool if you're um i mean man there's so many opportunities here i think with this one um no, wait, what's the restriction on taking this? Are you a specific cult at this point? Is this book all this based is, around... This is all Cult of Strife. It's their supplement. Okay. So this is like supplement Ultramarines or... So do you get the stuff... So you, you start with the stuff in the codex that we just read through Cult of Strife. Correct. And then, like, where you get the 2CP strat to fight again. And then you pick up this book and you get more stuff on top of it. That's more stuff on top is. of that. Correct. All right, cool. Now, there is the limitation... Um, and I've read through this, but I believe it basically, um, if you want access to the additional stratagems, as of right now, unless they FAQ it, the cult you have to your army has to basically be a cult of striped detachment. And how that interplays with a real space raid, I'm not 100% sure yet. 
Uh, I think they mm -hmm. need to probably do an FAQ on this. As of right now, I would say that you're probably going to have to do um, like the triple patrol list yeah. in order to get the stratagems. But you should still have access to the Warlord trait and the Relic. So you could still build this in a real space raid. You're just not going to get the, the extra strats unless you have a patrol okay. of Cult of Strife. Right, yeah, because, I mean, they still have rules in the basic book, so all that right. stuff's... Yeah, and we just went through a lot of that's nasty anyway. I mean, let's face it, I think... I want to try building a list that's all witches and melee and uh, stuff anyway. Yeah, it, it gets crazy. Um, all right, so you take that competitive Ed Warlord trait, and then... Uh, I think everybody's favorite right now is the Dark Lotus Toxin. So what this does is, as long as you're not using a weapon that's a relic, you can add mm -hmm. one to the strength and damage characteristic of all melee uh -huh. weapons this bear is equipped with. So, you know, you can actually use just the generic glaive. Uh, you could use the Agonizer that she comes with. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, these are actually really good weapons in their own right. So... The Agonizer is the basic whip, right? Yeah, that's that's your that's basic, basic four plus four poison yeah. whip. Um okay. But so this adds all melee weapons, right? So, you know, um, with her, she has the, the glaive. And I'm just going to pull this up real quick. So the, yeah, cool. the glaive is plus two strength, minus three AP, one damage. So uh, it's actually going to be plus three strength, two damage now. So, I mean, your base witch is going to be strength six with a minus three doing two damage with six attacks. That's pretty good. But I think where this That's really good. shines is uh, you can replace the Agonizer and the Archite Glaive with uh, either the Hydra Gauntlets, Razor Flails, or Chardonnay Impaler. And what I really like is replacing it with the Razor Flails because what the Razor Flails do is each time this model makes an attack, it makes two attacks instead of one. So now you're looking at 12 Dang. attacks. Or if you charged, because you could still at this point... Um, Personally, I like taking the plus one drug with this guy uh, just because I really like hitting at strength five versus strength four. Definitely. Um, so I would take the strength five. So you're ruining like most things on threes or, or fours. But keep in mind, you do get the, the, the additional attack. So, you know, you could make an argument here for getting the extra attack because now you're going to go from 12 attacks to 14 attacks on the charge, which could be a big deal. But you're looking at 12 attacks on the charge. Hitting on twos, wounding most things at strength five. So, you know, wounding most things on threes uh, for two damage at minus one AP. And then Dang. keep in mind that all the Dark Eldar basically have the, the Blade Masters or Blade Experts, which gives them additional minus one AP on the sixes. So I think oh, this, yeah, that's this crazy. Lady... It's like shuriken weapons in combat. It's right, better than right. that. It's like, yeah. So, okay. So hold on. So you're talking about two attacks for each one. I'm looking at this now, Razor Flails. Strength user three, so what you just read makes it four, two damage. Strength four minus one, two damage. Right. Dang, and then that's you give her the, any combat drugs. And then you give her the plus one strength combat drug, making her strength five. Dang, that's better than like a Harlequin's Kiss. You know, I played the, I played the heck out of those things last edition. And the Kiss on a D3 damage, you hope for that too. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, oh man, that's pretty solid. Double, that reminds me of the chain flails that the uh, Talos used to have. Or you like make double the attacks and stuff. You just go in and blend stuff. Yeah, I don't know. There's something to that. I, I, so I think personally, if I was going to take a cult of strife, this is what I would go with. Uh, I personally, I think this is a, a really fun option. Uh, there is there is a little bit of controversy here though, because like I said earlier, competitive edge. Uh, each time the warlord fights, if all of its attack. Uh, as long as it attacks one unit after resolving all those attacks, it can make a number of additional attacks against that enemy e unit equal to the number of attacks that did not reach the inflict damage step of the attack sequence, right? So the question is, if you make an additional attack against that enemy unit, does that get to be two attacks with the Razor Flails? I'm going with yes, hands down. If you're taking this build, you deserve it. Two so, hit rolls instead of one. I think so. I mean... You get you look you still get exploding sixes when you reroll hits, right? I mean, like in other cases. Yeah, so. I mean, I I don't know. Uh, I I think if you get the uh, two attacks when you get that additional attack, I think that makes this 
powered up to 11, right? Like oh, this is out of control. It's really good. How I can still see this being um, FAQ to me like, no, you just get the one additional hit. It's, you don't get to double it up with the razor flails. But even if you're not doubling it up, I mean, 12 attacks that have basically built in reroll fail safes on hits, wounds, and save. Now I know like, you know, when you get to the save and they save it, you basically get to start all start over, over again. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I think that's still pretty darn good. That's really good. So and, I think, yeah, I think that's, I think that's a very cool build. Um, you know, if, so is that a relic or a warlord trait that gives you well, that bonus that you were talking about? The that's the, that's trait. the black Lotus thing, right? Well, the, the Black Lotus is what gives the plus one strength, plus one damage. Yeah, that thing. The competitive edge, the thing that gives you additional attacks, is the Warlord trait. So so she's not going to be the only one on your list. So this is totally viable as like a, you buy a second Succubus, right? And mm -hmm. you give her an extra relic and you pay her 15 points. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I like this. This isn't even taking up your Warlord stacking jank that you're going to put in there. Well, I mean, if you have two succubuses, at that point you're looking definitely at running a patrol uh, because you're not going to be able to do that in a real space raid. Oh yeah, you're um, right. Yeah, you can you can pay the CP for uh, uh, the extra warlord trait. You can pay the CP for the extra relic. You can build out this second witch, and I think she is also a, a very a very strong candidate here. Um, I I still think. I, I still think that your your bread and butter is going to be the agonizer with the mortal wounds personally. Yeah. Um but I think this one's a strong contender too. Uh if you're in doubt, I think I think you just go with the basic, you know it's gonna work twos and twos, you can't really go wrong. But I yeah. think this one is is an awesome addition. And then keep keep an eye out to see if this gets FAQ'd because I could see this going either way. Um, and if they give you two attacks on that additional attack, this, oh, man. I mean, she becomes a blender with those oh, man. razor flails. I dig uh, it. That's a pretty I, cool, that's a pretty cool unit. Yeah. I, I think, I think she is neat. Yeah. I have not heard of that one before. So, uh, so now how's this all stack up to the main lady herself, Lil Lilith or whatever her name is. Lilith. 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 Yeah. Lilith. I've always is called her Lilith. Still boss? So. I think that you can build a better succubus than Lilith. Um, it sounds like it. <laughs> but what's cool about Lilith is that uh, she actually can get the um, the upgraded succubus build ability for free. So you can kind of have two of them in the oh, same nice. patrol. So technically you could have three patrols. You could have three succubuses and you could upgrade each one of them. Um, and then mm -hmm. you could then make Lilith your fourth. I don't think you'd ever go that route. Uh, she also is an option if you are doing three succubuses and you need you want that fourth because of the rule of three, right? You'd be capped here. She allows yep. you to get that fourth. And and I don't think she's bad. Uh, I just don't know if she's worth taking. Yeah. Um, okay. Unless you unless you really want her. I mean, another thing is she's kind of hard to get. She's only available in that uh, Faith and Fury box or Faith. Oh, and... When they do that stuff. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure she'll come out later. Uh, but for now, she's pretty hard to get a hold of unless you have a friend who plays sisters. Uh, but she's she's based yeah. 90 points versus, you know, the 60 point succubus with the 15 point upgrade. So 90 points versus 75. Yeah. Okay. Um, she I mean, she, she moves eight. She's got, I believe, the same stat characteristics as a regular succubus. So six, eight inch movement, two plus two plus. Uh, she's got the built-in stuff that you pay for though right like i thought that was her that was her shtick it's like she's got the stuff that you would have paid 15 points for anyway yeah she, had, she actually sure she has, consolidates so she has one yeah she does she's got one extra attack so she's got base seven attacks she's got lilith's blades this is her melee weapon it's plus one strength so she's strength four minus three ap one damage each time an attack is made with this weapon an unmodified hit roll of six scores one additional hit so she's got exploding sixes yep. Yep. um She's got the Blade Artist ability, which is the sixes to wound, you know, minus one uh, AP. Uh, at last, a challenge. Um, so each time this model makes a melee attack against targets a character unit, you can reroll the hit roll and wound rolls. So she's really good at attacking characters. The only problem I have with this is she only does one damage. Oh. So you don't really want her to 
Come do on. attacks against characters because you know they nope. they're they're going to have invulnerable saves. So you know she's in a really weird uh, position. Anyway, uh, I'll keep reading through what she does. So she's got the Quicksilver Dodge, four plus invulnerable save. She's got the Brides of Death Aura, where she gives uh, reroll wound rolls of one. So succubuses are like lieutenants. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Good army, so they they get plus one to wound rolls. Yeah. Or plus one uh, reroll one wound rolls are one. Yeah. In melee. Uh, Deadly Dance. Each time this model makes the consolidation move, it can move three additional and doesn't have to end closer. Yeah, so, so there's your 15 points, thing. kind of. Yep. And then in your command phase, you can select one of the following thrilling acrobats until the end of your turn. This model is uh, eligible to declare a charge in a turn in which it fell back or advanced. Okay. Uh, and then Gory Spectacle. In the fight phase of this turn, this model destroys an enemy unit. Then at the end of that phase, it can fight again. I mean, that's pretty nasty, but... It- it is, but then you got to remember she's only got seven attacks. She only does one damage. Yeah. Um, she also has the no escape rule, which is, again, um, it's hard to roll off. Yeah. So my problem with this is, can she kill a five uh, a five man squad of Primaris Marines? Probably not. Definitely not. Yeah. And for, for cheaper, sucks. you can build one that I think 100% can do it easily. Yep. And, well, and that maybe, even a, wound one is savage. maybe even a 10 man squad if you get lucky, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. So, I mean, I guess she gets mm. potentially she gets the option to fight again, but. Does she have like a cult associated? Can she? Well, so, so I well, destroys. I guess all she has to do is destroy an enemy model. Well. So, I guess she's probably going to be fighting twice, probably every time. Oh, okay, it's, she doesn't kill. It's not as she gets the kill on the unit. Right. If this model destroys any enemy models, then at the end of that phase, she can fight again. So I take okay, that back. So she's, she's probably trying... fighting twice. That's actually pretty, that's big. But, okay, so this is this is the problem <laughs> with her, though, right? Because I, I feel like she's confused because she's got a special rule that allows her to reroll hits and wound against characters. But then she's got this other thing where she, like, gets to fight oh, twice right. when she kills enemy units. Which is, you know, it's saying, hey, you want to attack an infantry unit, but yeah. she gets her best bonuses from fighting characters, but I don't think she has enough umph to kill a character, but she could definitely kill, you know what I mean? She's, I, yeah, no, I totally see that. She's not going to take a character. I mean, when you say character, nowadays, you're talking about a Gravis Marine Captain. That's right. what we're talking about. We're not talking about, you know, an Eldar Psyker anymore. That's what everybody's putting on the fields. So, you know, a Death Guard, Terminator captain like no she's not going to kill that Probably so yeah i think not. you want i think you want her wherever the razor flail chick is and they're just tag teaming slaughtering well, that, things in the backfield if you're trying to kill like uh, lord of contagion that one yeah. damage is not going to be a hindrance for True. you versus <laughs> um let's see here does she does she get a combat drug oh man um oh no she doesn't take drugs I don't think, I don't she, think she does. Oh no, garbage! Get this out of here. No, she doesn't. So she nope. must have that built into her plus one attack. Uh yeah, I'm over this. I would take the other two we build hands down. I yeah. mean, there's other stuff too. Like there's other characters in here, like Drazar and stuff. Yeah, I feel like you're you're just paying such a premium for her that she's not really worth yeah. what she's getting. Nah. So we got our two our two base succubus for right. sure. With so going back to the, the the succubus here. So those were the cult of stripe ones and. You know, I think those are those are solid. Uh, and the first build that I talked about, I think you can actually replace that in in any ones. Uh, real quick, I want to talk about. Yeah. There is a uh, uh, cult of red grief. Um, I don't think anybody's really looking at the cult of the red grief right now. At least I haven't seen it. Um, so their their obsession basically allows you to reroll charge rolls made for the units with this obsession, which rerolling charge rolls is always good. Remember that yeah. you're you're running uh, and charging, advancing and charging, but you also get to add two inches to advance rolls made for this unit with this obsession. So this unit basically hmm. moves eleven inches, Jeez, guaranteed. Yeah. So yeah. coming out of a raider. You're probably going to be able to go from the raider, you get your three inch pile out, uh, and then another 11 inches on top of that. But you know, your d6 could easily be higher, but you're guaranteed 11 inches and you get to reroll your yeah. charge. That's savage. I think these these witches are really fast. Um, 
They also yeah. have a relic, which I think is a pretty cool relic. Uh, so models equipped with this, uh, it's a glaive. They replace their glaive, and they get plus two to their strength, minus three, and three damage. And the reason I think this one's kind of neat oh. is if you're going for the precision strikes where your sixes do mortal wounds, fishing for sixes and doing three mortal wounds every time you hit with the six, I think is kind of neat. Downside of this build, though, is you're only going to have the six attacks because you're not getting the plus three for the whip. So you're looking at six okay. attacks, maybe plus one. I don't know. I mean, uh... it's I don't think it's great. Um but one of the things that I really like about this cult is that they're fast. Uh, I think they're going to get across the board. You're going to guarantee those, those you know, jumping out of your radar halfway across the board, running across and getting in there. Your opponent's going to be on their heels. Um, yeah. And they, they do have this really neat stratagem called the Athletic Aerialist. And it's used this stratagem after a cult of Red Grief infantry unit has resolved a close combat attack, but before it makes its consolidation move. Instead of consolidating as normal, if every model in that unit is within six inches of a friendly cult of the Red Grief transport unit, they can embark in that transport as opposed to the movement phase, even if that unit has disembarked this turn. Provided oh my enough God. transport capacity remaining for the whole unit to him. Even if they disembark this turn. What? So they can jump out of their transports, run across the board, you can aether sail your transport up behind them to get in position. Jeez. They charge in, they attack stuff, jump back in their raider. I think and that's, that's pretty, pretty Yeah, that's nasty. And it's pretty easy to anticipate all of that exact movement because like you're talking about if you have to, fixed advancing the transport. You're talking about reliable, like let's get within eleven inches for these ladies, you know. And you only have to be within six inches of the transport. Mm -hmm. So the transport has to, you know, you can go six inches farther than it can move when it auto advances. So like, this is pretty reliable to pull. Yeah, off. I mean, you can the measure this moves, out. The raider moves fourteen. You can advance the yeah. aether sail if you really need it to get it across the board. Eight, you right? can get that raider yeah. parked right next to these ladies when they charge. Oh yeah, in. Wow, um, this is really good. Well, and and also not to say that you couldn't, you couldn't give that raider uh, chain snares. Oh, here we go. Or like a shock prow, <laughs> right? You can actually charge with it because if it's turn two, it can advance and charge just like the rest of your army. And now you're going to have six attacks, threes to hit, or fours to hit. It's at strength like seven. And if you really wanted to, you could pop a shock prow to do mortal wounds to models within two inches on top of the unit. Oh, thing, no. which, I mean, I could easily, I could easily see charging in with the witches, which we'll get to what witches can do later, but charging with the witches, charging with this transport, killing everything that they hit. And then they just jump back into their transport. Get back like in. <laughs> and I, chances are your succubus has that ability where she can go an extra three inches. So she could probably sit behind it too. If it's she already could, full. Or if she's within six <laughs> inches, she just jumps right back in the transport. Or, or uh, or I she, guess, I guess it's only one unit. I mean, yeah, it's, it's yeah, one, only strap, use on one but, unit. but yeah, you're right. She can just on. pile in back and just hide behind the raider. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Okay. I think <laughs> I, I think nobody's looking at this right now, but I think there's some some pretty cool things you could do with this. Uh, you know, witches are very fragile. If they're dug into combat, you know, it's okay to leave them there. But if they're yeah. if, but if they're not, you want to get back in your transport. Now, there's nothing saying that. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's nothing to say that if you're. Uh, <laughs> If you're engaged in combat, you can't use this. So even if you don't yep. kill it, yep. right, you could just pile back in. So it's another way to, like, I charge out. Let's say I attack, I don't know, what's something big and nasty that you don't necessarily want to be fighting? Well, you don't want to be stuck with anything. I mean, you don't even want to be stuck in with 10 intercessors anymore. Sure, because sure. Because they're going to hit mean, you first next time. But This is a way, I mean... Uh, most of the things are going to kill your transport next turn anyway at this point, yeah. but it basically keeps your witches safe for a round. Well, so, sure, yeah. um, well, I mean, like aggressors. Look at aggressors, right? So let's just let's just say you happen to get in on aggressors. They've got a few big power fist attacks, but like you'd rather have them smashing the transport because there's only three of them. They're not going to wrap you. You're going to get out. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff, like you said. You need a three custodian just, guard, or yeah. This stratagem with a succubus with show stealer basically allows you to charge in. You're attacking first. You're going to hit two things. 
and both of them are going to dump out <laughs> and not take any attacks back. I don't know. I think that's cool. We can I move on. So. Uh, Cult of the Red Grief. I think there's some play here. I could see, I could see an all witch army taking one patrol of these these just yep. for fun. And I think so, okay. So stuff. so if you're so if we're building a list that's 100 percent witch cult, you can take three patrols of three different cults. You could right? yeah for sure yeah. All right, I'm gonna keep and, that and, in mind because and I that's think that nasty. might might be the right move here because. You know, you're, you're going to probably take all your specialty troops, like your Hellions and stuff, and you'll want to put those into your uh, Strife to get some of the nice stratagems for them. Your yeah. base Witches, I think most of them you're going to have in your, um, I think, Cult of the Cursed Blade, personally. Um, yeah, because I was looking at that. I wanted to talk about some of their stuff there. Sure, sure. Um, well, let's let's talk about the Cursed Blade next. So, uh, so their obsession is only the strong will thrive. Um and this adds plus one strength to their to the characteristic of models with this obsession. So your your witches are going to be base strength four, um, which is amazing. Uh, and yeah. each time you make an unmodified saving throw of a six with this model uh, against model melee attack, after the attack model unit has uh, finished making its attacks, that enemy suffers one mortal wound. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty... That's like... Uh... <laughs> This call reminds me of stuff that it wants to get stuck in, and it wants to it wants to get fought back, and that you want them to waste their melee time on you. It's all this stuff sort of compounds, right? It's like plus one strength. You want to get in the charge. You don't really care if stuff's hitting you back. Some of the stuff later too. Yep. So, um, so there, there's a couple things here uh, for me anyway. So I, I really like this cult, um, and I know I've talked to you about it quite a bit, uh, and I know you like it too, but yeah. Giving your base, which is strength five base with their oh, combat man. drug. I, I don't know, man. I, they have three attacks base. They get plus one from their witch blades. So they have four attacks. A squad of 10 of them is doing 40 attacks. They're all hitting on threes plus one. If you're in turn three, you're getting plus one to hit. So you're yep. hitting on twos. You're wounding on threes. Yep. You're minus one AP base with, the, with your uh, witch knives. And this is without any special weapons or anything. This is nothing, exactly. Forty-one attacks, yeah. Uh, plus one for the you know the the, the leader. Uh, I mean, and I don't it's know. Man. Any, Rel- any it's six- relatively cheap. I mean, that's yeah, a, that's a Harlequin cheap. troop with caresses at that point. And I've been I've been thriving off of those things for the past two years. You know, you take and you take the point cost of something like that compared to the point cost of a bunch of witches. This is a great starting place, right? And, and they're gonna die, right? Yeah. And you know they're gonna die. And that's why I, I, I really like the second part of that obsession is when they do die, you have a chance to do mortal wounds back to your opponent. <laughs> that is nuts. Think about what's going to kill 10 witches, right? You're going to get hit. Let's say a squad of inner, you, you go into a squad of intercessors, say there's 10 of them. Let's say you kill four for some reason. I, I you feel like you're, you're probably going to kill eight. most of them at that Let's point. Let's say yeah. you kill six of them, right? Sure. Four guys hitting back is still of 100 dice, right? It's still a ridiculous amount of punching they're gonna all punch you back and you're gonna take a sixth of that and you're gonna roll hot and you're right. gonna kill the other four <laughs> right. and 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 your toughness three so you're almost inviting them to actually wound you oh right? yeah please and, uh, let me make those saves right and, and and in close combat they have their dodge so they have a four plus invulnerable so yeah. they're still gonna be fairly survivable you're gonna take a lot of wounds and you're gonna fish for those sixes and you're gonna try to do mortal wounds back that's what I mean. These, I, I, these ladies want to get stuck in. I, I, I love think, this. I like them. And, and in my opinion, um, Drakari, you're, you're going to be trading units anyway. Yeah. Because you like any time a witch squad gets out of a raider, you don't expect them to live. They're going to be <laughs> they're dead. coming back. Before it gets back to your turn, they're going to be dead. There's yep. no way they're going to survive the shooting phase unless they're able to get it stuck in in combat with their uh, Chardonnay. Um, man, they're good. They're good. You know, uh, I know um, this is a 40k podcast, but this really reminds me of the Daughters of Cain. I, I think they oh, took yeah. a lot of inspiration from the Daughters of Cain and how the Daughters of Cain function in Age of Sigmar, where it's just fistfuls of attacks, just dice after dice after dice, and yeah. ways to make them just super brutal, but they're really fragile and they die really easily. And I really like this way. I think I think they nailed the witches. Um, I think they're very strong and I think there's a lot you can do with them. Uh, 
and, and as as someone who's been trying to make witches work for <laughs> many years, I yeah, I am in love with what what they got going. It's their on day. It's their day. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna put on my technical analysis hat and shit in your cereal here. Okay. So each time you make an amount of a saving throw of a six. Okay. Mm-hmm. So five marines, four marines are left. They're throwing a bunch of attacks. Technically, they're fighting you one model at a time. So everybody picks up all their dice. We roll fast dice. The question is, does it now matter that I'm rolling again? I'm rolling saves against all of your attacks when it's possible that the first two marines would have killed my whole unit. Think about that for a second. No, because do I, I mean, make you it, roll it out one by one? No, because it, it very specifically states after the attacking models unit has finished making its attacks. Okay, so even if yeah, that's fair. So, so you can't you, you really you can't hold you, people you keep back track anyway. of all the mortal wounds and then yeah. inflict them at the end. Done. Boom, they handled it. Because yep. I can see that stuff getting messy. Do you remember when like Gilliman first came out? We were analyzing his sword, and it's Ugh. like you roll one attack at a time because then it can explode and do mortals, and then you got to save the vulnerables before the mortals. And it was like yeah. it was a nightmare to play him because if anybody knew how to defend against him, they were going to make you roll out one at a time so they could not get their whole squad wiped. Yeah, so I, I guess man, they took care of it. I don't know. I, I tend to. I, I wish that sure. I wish they would not write the rule that way. I, I think yeah. it should just, uh, you take same, what type weapons and, and roll it all out. Yeah. Like uh, Gilliman yeah. should just do all of his mortals right off the bat. You know stuff like that. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, you know, if anything, I was cool kind of curious. I, I read through this a couple of times to make sure, like, oh, is it only ever one mortal wound back? Yeah, right. Per That's six. what but I was it, looking for too. It, it does seem like every time you roll a six, it's one mortal wound inflicted. So <laughs> you so, know what's funny about this? We saw this on the robots in the Admech, the shooting or whatever the hell those bullshit bots uh-huh. for forever ago. We saw that, and that was such a nightmare. Literally, people did not want to shoot you because you know on a six or whatever it was. Yeah, if one point was a four, more than a five. Yeah, like I would not shoot those things. You can't not From fight these the ladies. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Well, so yeah. this is only melee. So they at least. <laughs> no, but I'm saying covered. this is better because you can't even avoid this. You can't even choose not to engage these ladies. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, this is. I'm sick. pretty sure there's a rule that says if you have attacks, you have to make them. You can't you forego your attacks. Yeah, I think you have to fight. Yep. It's been a lot of additions, but I think I've actually had a game. <laughs> Literally, where uh, I was, uh, I got some of these cursed blades stuck in against a tank, <laughs> and my opponent was like, "Yeah, I don't care. I'm not going to attack back." And I'm like, "No, go ahead, go ahead." I mean, on the off <laughs> chance I get that mortal wound throw against the tank, oh. but oh. I will say, so they're fighting the Lamon Rust battle tank, right? Yeah. At strength five, which means they were still wounding on five, you can not still six. Wound it. I yeah. love it. Yeah, still and wound it. I think they took it down to like three wounds left. So I mean, that's not nothing. Oh yeah, I mean, I'd trade, I'd trade some witches for a few wounds in that case. That's awesome. So look, look at this. So look at this relic that they have here. This is okay. So the Harlequin player in me loves this relic because we already talked about it. these ladies are getting in. So let's just say their succubus is getting in, and they're all gonna die, right? So this traitor's embrace relic. Okay. Um, the bear is destroyed by a melee attack. Roll a d6 on a 2+. plus. You get to basically explode in their face, right? D3 plus 3 mortal wounds. Yeah, it's a high-risk, high-reward relic, <laughs> though. Um, the 2+, plus is scary. That is scary. Because you know you're going to roll the 1. Yep, I It's going to happen one. all the time. Yep, but, can't re-roll it. I'll roll the 1. Uh, I, I, <laughs> you know, I think this is really cool. And, and one of the things that I like about her is that if you give her the showstopper, right? She char okay. So let let me talk about the build I like with this one. All right, all right. So there's there's two options. Um, it's very similar to the other one. Uh, I like to take the quicksilver. So she's got two attacks. So she's got six attack space. I give her the razor flails. Yep. So now she's she's rocking twelve attacks. Um, I give her the plus one strength combat drug. So she's strength five. Um, and then. I let her just go in and attack and she's basically there to try to kill infantry. I give her the, the traitor's embrace relic. And my idea with her is that I'm going to run in, I'm going to attack a squad, hopefully take it out, or if not cause a lot of damage. And then I'm going to comp- uh, pile into uh, any kind of HQ that they have around there, like a space mm-hmm. captain or whatever. 
and just let him punch me in the face. Maybe I get a six in there, do a mortal wound back to him. But if he kills me on a two plus, I'm going to do D three plus three mortal wounds every day. So hopefully, I mean, this is, this is my, my sacrificial succubus. And I, you know, I, I think this is the best use. Cause again, I think you're going to be trading these succubuses They're I mean, they're tough, but they're not that tough. And if I can take out a squad or most of a squad and someone's HQ character, oh man, that is yeah. that is amazing. Um, the Warlord trait here, Treacherous Deceiver, I just want to point this out here real quick too. Mm-hmm. Um, you do Mortal Wounds back on a 4+. plus. I, I'm not sure if the extra two attacks, which is technically four at the Razor Flails, might be not worth taking this because... Basically, what you're doing here is anytime you make a save, a save, a successful save with her on a four plus invulnerable, yep, which is what her save is, yep. you're always going to do a mortal wound back. So I think oh, there, there's definitely some, some, some play here with taking the treacherous deceiver, the traitor's embrace, so that people keep trying to kill you. You just keep <laughs> killing them back as they try to kill Dude. you, and then when they finally do kill you, you explode. I think that's cool. <laughs> I like it. It's, oh no. She, I don't know. She's probably going to make it into a lot of my lists. Uh, Absolutely. Because I think you're going to get more out of her from being killed than you are her trying to kill stuff with her razor foils. Yeah. And I, I just think, yeah. I think this is a super cool build. I really like it. Um, the only way I would modify this is if I wasn't going to take the traitor's embrace. Uh, there's a very cool relic here. Um, let me flip to it here real quick. Uh, yeah, so it's called it's called the Animus Vitae, mm-hmm. and it's a grenade. It's got six inches, and you can only shoot it once in the shooting phase, once for battle. And if it hits, the target unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. If the target unit is 11 or more models, it suffers D3 plus three mortal wounds. But <laughs> what it does is, until the end of your turn, friendly units with power from pain ability treat the current battle round as being one higher than it actually is determining the effects. So, when you use it or while it's equipped? When you, you get that yeah, when you use it. Okay. Yeah. So uh cool. That's crazy. So geez. Now this this is your grenade, right? Yeah, it's a grenade. Um yeah. so I really like putting this on a succubus because you know she's gonna jump out, she's gonna run forward, and then she's gonna throw it. And I mean, we basically the power from pain. So most likely you're going to be in turn two when you're jumping out and charging. You could you can do a turn one charge, but let's be honest. You're, this is probably going to be happening in turn two. In turn two, your power from pain allows you to advance and charge. Advance and charge, yep. But your turn three ability is your plus one to hit. Mm. So basically your turn two is now going to get the turn three abilities. And all your witches that are charging in are now going to be hitting on twos instead of threes. Yeah. So I, mean, I think this is a super good support uh, option for a witch cold army. Um, and, you know, they don't necessarily care. Uh, the other option would be to try to do this in turn three so that you get your five plus invulnerable, which isn't terrible, but I think you really want the plus one to hit in turn two for your witches. So that's. Yep. I think that's good you know it's it's really hard uh she's not going to be as killy but i i think um i think there's something to be said for that that build too where it basically is going to make your whole army really strong and i i could see running that kind of witch in an army where you know you have like three or four raiders full of like witch squads you're going to be jumping them out you got like some bikes you got uh your hellions and turn two, you're going to be hitting as much stuff as you can, as hard as you can. And having your whole army hitting on twos in turn two is going to be super good. And as far as damage output, I think that is going to be the most bang for your buck. Army Man, it's the whole army because it's any friendly with power from pain. Right. So it doesn't even have to be the same cult. So this could be on one of your faster witches. It could be on – yeah, right. but I mean – yeah, and with like if you have like a black heart but... cabal, they have they're plus one already. Yeah. So in turn two, they're going to be turn four, which means that all your all your cabal stuff is going to have a five plus invul save, which is yeah. I mean really that's strong. 
That's crazy. But if we're talking like all witches, like you said, getting everything in their face, those witches having that plus one, plus one, plus one to, hit. to hit is just dang. So, especially because witches we're talking about aren't strength three. They're not your mama's witches. No, no. And, and again, like <laughs> I said, I really like, I like strength five witches. Um, yeah, me personally. too. So in turn two, I think the most damage output is going to be this grenade. I think you put it on a succubus. Uh, you you have her run in. Um, you give her. Oh, honestly, the the best build is probably going to be the grenade. You give her the shardnet and impaler, so she does two two damage. You give her the uh, the warlord trait for the precision strikes. Mm -hmm. So now what you're looking at is you have six attack space. Um, I would probably give her the plus one attack in combat or when she charges. So seven attacks. You're fishing for some mortal wounds, maybe uh, Chardonnay Impaler, and because that does two damage base, she's yeah, going to be strength. If if she's the, uh, sorry, if she is the Cursed Blade, she's going to be strength five with her Chardonnay. She's going to do some work. She's not going to be great. She's she's not going to be. But the grenade is really why you're bringing her, and I think uh, she's pretty cool. Um, I guess the other option would be to, to make her so all of her saves do mortal wounds back. That might be even more damage output for her because uh, you get 50% chance to do a mortal wound, which pretty good. The only downside of that is anybody smart enough is going to just shoot her if they can. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter what you throw the grenade at, right? You just have to use it. Right. Uh, I yeah. mean, I mean, very specifically, I've, I've read it over a couple times. I don't even think you have to hit with it, to be honest. I think you just have to throw it. Uh, it's kind it's of unclear. Because hmm. it just well, says, I mean, it says yeah. Bear can only shoot with this weapon once per battle. If it hits, oh, so if it hits the target, suffers D3 mortal wounds. Yeah, but, but then, it's not like uh, the, the power from pain benefit only affects interaction with the thing you hit. It's, I mean. Oh, no, it's, it's army It wide. just ups it, yeah. It's pretty nasty. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's an argument of the hit thing. Because like it says, if it hits, the unit suffers the mortal wounds. Then there's a period. It says until the end of the turn, enemy units with the power from pain ability. I mean, it might just go off if you use it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I, I think what it your does. thoughts are on that. No, I think it's just once you use it, it just happens. I think the mortal stuff is nice, but I think we're keying in on the important part. So, I mean, you can, and you can give it to anybody. See, that's the thing. You yeah, anybody could take this. I mean, you don't have to give it to a succubus. Yeah. You can give it to your archon. Yeah, uh, you can give it to your homunculus. It's useful Monculus, in so many like, other armies. God. It depends. It depends what you're building, right? Yeah, I could easily see this going on a homunculi. Uh, Absolutely. Dang, that's pretty good. We didn't talk about the mix and match cults, but the one thing that I thought was interesting, I wanted to call out. If we're talking about strength five witches, mm -hmm. is I love the stimulant innovators. Now we talked about this before with some cabal stuff, but. Um, I mean, yes, it's once per battle, but like we said, you know, if everything's on the table, turn two, ready to go, right? Uh, in your command phase, roll a D3 on the combat drugs table. Now, if you look at the first three on the combat drugs table, those are the ones we're talking about that we want for bikes and helions and the stuff that's getting in there turn two. I mean, you couple that with launching that grenade, the power of your army just shot through the roof for one turn. That's yeah, pretty so crazy. So, so just to be clear, the, the one through three is uh, the plus one attack on the charge. It's the plus yep. one strength or yep. the add two to move characteristics. Yeah, so that's the stuff that, like, I mean, those things are going to get in and charge. Uh, yeah, three is probably not the greatest. I mean, but plus one attack or plus one strength, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't love it. Uh, because it's random. I mean, keep in mind, yeah. I don't think this is a uh, all-consuming, so you'd still get a second. Um, you would, pick yeah. On the on the cult, the build your cult. Yeah. Um, I think there's there's something here. I I mean, this could definitely be really good. You get a good roll. You could pop the uh, stratagem for your uh, uh, the doubling hyper backlash or yeah yeah hyper stim backlash for two CP, which basically doubles all drugs. You know, I think in a build like this, uh, you take the witch who gets uh, the warlord trait for three extra 
combat drugs or two extra combat drugs. So when you roll, you roll two additional <laughs> dice. So stim addict here. Let's talk about that real quick. When you determine the effects of combat drugs ability for your warlord before the battle, roll two additional dice. Rerolling results of six or results that are already in effect. Oh man! So you don't lose any of those dice. So, so That's the amazing. way the way that that works is you you first you'd roll your two d six or I guess technically you could pick and then roll two dice. But let's say you're rolling, so you roll your two dice. Okay. Now the way it's worded is if you roll doubles, you re-roll again until you get two or two results that aren't doubles. And once that's mm-hmm. over, then you just start rolling. Then you roll two more dice, and you you re-roll any sixes and anything else that you've already got. So let's let's just say you get lucky in your first roll and you don't get a six. Now you're oh, basically yeah. going to have four out of five results. Yep. All of which are that's good. So cool. <laughs> Um, and, and then if you take your build, right, you can get an additional one, two, or three on top of that. And then you use the hyper, uh, the hyper backlash yep. on her, and you're going to double all that. So let's just say you get the plus two strength, <laughs> right? So you have a strength yep. five, which you get plus two more. So she's going to be what? Eight strength, eight. Yeah. She's going way up. Yeah. Uh, I, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's silly. It's silly. Yeah. And, and I could see doing a lot of fun stuff like that. You know, yeah. I could see doing, if you're ever playing like in a crusade or like a, some sort of campaign at the, your game store or something or whatever, slow, glo- slow grow league or something, I could see taking a witch like this just, just for fun. Yeah. Now she, but, but that, that trait though, that, or that cult, you know, obsession, that part of it, that on bikes or helling we didn't talk about that stuff yet, but like, I don't know, man. If you if you pick, let's say you like the plus one toughness as the thing you normally pick, mm-hmm. the things you're rolling, the things you're rolling one to three on is not the plus one toughness. That's so like true. you're kind of getting a twofer. And you know, bikes and hellions. We already talked about them getting in. You know, on turn two with everything else that's coming out of the raider, like they're probably not going to get hit back. In or, or and, and if they do, I mean, good on it at T five or whatever. But T four. Right. Right. So I, for me, it really depends on what you're going to pair that with, because yeah. when I look at that, I think, okay, so I'm going to take, you know, like I said, the plus one toughness for the bikes. Yeah. Now on a one, I get an additional attack on the charge. On a two, I get plus one strength. And on a three, I get plus two movement. Do my bikes need plus two movement? Not really. Probably not. So plus one attack's pretty cool. Plus one strength is really what I want, especially with the Hellions. Yeah. Now I'm sitting everything yeah. on strength five with both those units. And I could just get that for free every turn if i just take the curse blade yeah that's true um but, but like i said it, extra, yeah. it depends on what you're pairing that with right there's there's some other options in here um for example i really like slashing impacts you know yeah. uh anytime you charge stuff on a roll of a six you do a mortal wound i think that's pretty cool and, and it's, it's, it's importantly because it's every model of yours so it's like right um, that's that's in range yeah um yeah. But I really like putting this on my jet bikes, especially if I take the um, uh, the grab talons, because now on sixes I'm charging in with my bikes. I'm doing mortal wounds on sixes, but in addition to that, I'm also rolling. Uh, like if I have four grab talons in my squad of twelve bikes, I'm doing mortal wounds on four plus, and on yeah. sixes I'm doing D three. I mean, you can you can really pump yeah. out a lot of mortal wounds here if you roll well. Uh, and there's also not something to be said about. I actually used to run this slashing impacts a lot before the new codex came out. I'm glad it's still here because one of the things I really liked doing was I'd charge in with like five witches, like little, little piddly squad that I maybe warped into the back of their table. And then I'd charge in with them. I'd give them the plus two charge combat drug back in the day. So they pretty much always got in. And, you know, if I get a six on any one of them charging in, I mean, that's, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, so I, I do like that. A test of skills also another cool one. Each time a model in this obsession makes a melee attack that targets a monster or vehicle, add one to the attack's wound roll. Um, oh, man. I think that's that kind of neat. could be too. interesting. Yeah. Right, because now your Hellions and your bikes, which are all strength four, are wounding most monsters and vehicles on force. So I, I think that's there's something Jeez. to be said there for that, too. I think Test of Skill is kind of cool, especially since... Um, like a all witch cult would probably struggle a little bit with uh, monsters and vehicles. Also, keep in mind, I think monsters and vehicles are part of their um, 
their secondaries that they can take to get additional victory points. Yeah, and, you're right, actually. And stuff like that. So that's kind of neat. Um, yeah. Like I said, you can have some fun with the other cults. Uh, if you ask me, though, I personally like the Cult of the Cursed Blade. Um, yeah. I know they don't have all the fun stratagems that the Cult of Strife has. There's a lot of cool options there. I, I mean, I think we probably need a whole other segment to talk about all of those oh, yeah. options. Yeah. But if we're looking at just straight power for power, I want to throw some models on the table. I want it to be fairly straightforward. I don't want to have to worry about doing the right thing at the right time. I think that you cannot go wrong with the Cult of the Cursed Blade. I think they got a ton of attacks. Like I said, 41 attacks. You know, if you use my grenade strat, turn two, you're going to be hitting on twos. You're going to be wounding everything on threes. I mean, they're they're going to just chew stuff up and spit it out. And we're talking, I don't know, 120 points. Throw them in a raider for like another, let's say, 100 points because you want to deck out your raider. 230 points, and this unit is just going to crush things. Yep. Gosh, so good. So good. The last thing I wanted to add to that, um, that potential, you know, list of all melee witch stuff, well, not even melee, but all witch stuff is like, do you consider Drazar? Is he worth including if you're running a bunch of witches, you got two or whatever, three different things. Is he leading one of the detachments since you're spending all your, all your warlord traits and relics on two succubuses or something? Um, so, so real quick, let's talk about Tolerate Ambition. So Tolerate Ambition is, is how you get additional Warlord traits to other uh, HQs in your army. Okay. And I believe it says that uh, uh, you can use this stratagem twice if you're playing a Strike Force. So your normal 2,000 point battle, you can use it twice. So for 2 CP. Um, yeah, so you can use it twice. Right. And, and the same thing goes with, uh, let's see, where is it? Prizes of the Dark City. So if you're playing in a Strike Force, you can use this one twice. So in theory, for four CP, you mm -hmm. can get uh, three, you can have three succubuses, each one that has a Warlord trait, uh, a Relic, and you could give them the uh, the show stealer, right? Yeah, just pay the points, yeah. Continue. And it's it's four CP total. But here, let me, let me tell you something kind of cool about this. The way that the uh, the raid, the real space, not the real space raid, I'm sorry, the way that the patrol thing's worded is, as long as all of your patrols are, uh, as long as your army's made up of nothing but patrol detachments, patrol detachments cost zero CP. Yeah. But if your warlord is part of the patrol detachment, you get two CP. So you start off with 14 CP if you take three patrols. Whoa. So you, you spend true four because of those. normally you get refunded. Yeah, but I have to think about that for a second because normally you pay all the CP for your detachment up front and then your warlord gives you a refund. It's not a refund, it says plus two, I believe. But yeah, you, but you I mean yeah, you. you're yes. you're right. But but in your case, the cost of your patrols isn't minus it's, two anymore. It's, it's zero. zero. Right. Oh whoa. So you start with fourteen CP. So <laughs> so you basically get a free relic and a free warlord trait yep. for an additional succubus. And then you spend, you know, the second two CP to do the third upgrade. Right. And then I, I, I do think you're right. I think you hundred percent, uh, spend the points on Drazar. If you're doing, if you're doing three patrols, yep. I think you spend the points on Drazar, uh, because he is a monster and he does everything that you want him to do by himself. Now you're not going to be able to give him a warlord trait, or maybe you decide that you want to give him a warlord trait. Um, we Wait, could. Can you? Well, you, yeah, for sure. He's not like the solitaire where he's like he stands. He just is his data sheet. Uh, well, so oh, he might have a fixed one. He right? has a fixed one. Yes. Okay. What's so he his do? fixed warlord trait, and let me go find it. Is because yeah, he's normally with incubi, but I mean it's really good. It's it's basically the one that allows you to reroll all miss hits and all miss wounds. Oh gosh! So he's like a mini incarn. Yeah, like he is. Uh, he is brutal. He is brutal. Let's see, because he's. Uh... Oh, and he does get power from pain. Yeah, even though he doesn't need does. to attack or whatever, plus two hit. But uh... yeah, that's right. He is blade artist too. Power from pain. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, he fights twice all the time, so he's got ten attacks basically. Um... 
Yeah, he's got Hatred Eternal base, so he basically, anytime he makes an attack, you can reroll wound and hit rolls. So, I mean, you combine that with turn two, he also, or turn two, if you throw your grenade, you know, he's going to have the plus one to hit, which means that if he's attacking anything with a minus one to hit, which yep. we all know that stuff is out there yep. all over the yep. place, you're pretty much always going to be hitting on twos. He's wow. only strength four, but, you know, depending on which blade you're going to use, which is probably going to be the dual, or the the dual blades, right? So he's going to be strength four, but get this, his uh, master of blade aura is friendly incubi units. Yeah. Not core. Not core. Not core. So incubi. He's okay. incubi. He's an incubi. So yeah. his aura still affects himself. So, so is that, so is that how they change this up now? Most of the auras will say like affect friendly core units. Is yeah, that what they did yeah. differently so like, in this book? Compare that to like the Succubus, for it's example, gonna, has the yeah, Brides exactly. of Death aura, while friendly witch cult core units are within six. Gotcha. And she does not have core because yeah, she's so, just an HQ. Right. So Trezar, oh, so savage. Look at this guy. Trezar's Master of Blades still affects him, so he still gets oh, plus no. one wound. So he's going to be strength five, which means that he's mooning most things on fours, if not threes. He'll get the plus one to, hit, to wound, so he's going to be threes or fours. And you get he Dang. you could have rerolls. I don't think it's necessary. You could probably totally not spend the warlord trade on him, but you could. And he yeah. becomes nasty. Um, let's see. Wow. Uh, each attack against him is minus one damage. We yeah. know how good that is after that looking at the death guard codex. Yeah. Uh, murderous assault. Uh, this model can be selected one additional time to fight in the phase. <laughs> so yeah. he basically gets to fight twice all the time with his five attacks, and he makes two attacks. Uh, so, so seven attacks base basically. If you're going to be using the dual blades, four up invulnerable. Oh, yeah, that's true. And he's yeah. got the tormentor rule, which uh, all Incubi have now, where you roll two d six, and if you score higher than your opponent's leadership, they have to yeah. strike after all of your eligible units from your army have fought. Yeah, which I love is, leadership. In Jay, my opinion, worse than the nice to have strike last. Because well, like, yeah, the result is the result is the ultimate. Like you are screwed. Yeah, you are. But um, it's probably just in the size. I mean, most things are what rock and leadership eight. Yeah, so. but it doesn't matter because eh, five. Yeah, but, you know. Okay, yeah. But think of it this way, right? All your raiders, you could easily put uh, trophy racks on, which is minus yeah, two leadership true. auras. God, it's so brutal. So three, anything within three inches of your raiders are minus two leadership. So now all your standard leadership eights or whatever are going to be sixes, Ugh. which. Average okay. roll is seven. This guy's this guy's crazy. He's got to be he's got to be two hundred points. He's not. He's like one thirty five, I believe. Every day, all, all day, every day. Drazar comes along. Can he lead a patrol on his own? Like I don't know why you wouldn't you take. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Um, yep. Um, you know he doesn't really get anything from leading anything by himself. But yeah, if you're only going to want to take like two succubuses, you could you could take them. Yeah. I mean, he could. Uh, ooh, that's a good question. I believe he can lead a uh, witch cult. I don't think he doesn't have a. Yeah, he doesn't have like a keyword, right? He's yeah, because he's a, he's a blade for hire. So I think he could you could have a witch cult that he leads. Yeah, I don't think I there's anything stopping him from doing that. And he has blade artists. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this guy is I'll be honest. If I'm taking him, I'm also taking probably at least 10 to 20 incubi. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a whole different thing. But I'm just thinking like if I, if I wanted to play all witch cult. Sure, know, sure. R- roughly, oh, I would right? take him. A, I would take yeah. him 100%. Yeah. Because I mean, you can you can save some CP on uh, building up another another succubus, or you can do it too. I mean, I mean, three succubuses that are that are completely geared out, and him. I mean, that's scary. Yeah, I don't care what else you put on the field. Raiders with witches are just a just a <laughs> the appetizer, right? And you can have bikes. You're gonna have hellions, right? I mean, yep. we didn't even get into that stuff, but like. You can't ignore what what do you take? How many bikes do you take? Not nine, or do you go all I take fifteen? I mean, yeah, I guess there's an argument there. Uh I think yeah. yeah, so you get you get your for every three bikes you get uh one special weapon and one uh like grab talon or yeah. I don't even know what the other one is. I can't remember. I'd never take it and I don't think anybody should ever take it. So just let's just say grab talon. Grab talon is the way to go. Um so if you have nine, you basically will have three. So let's say you have three heat lances yeah. or three blasters, and you have your three three grab, grab talons. Um, 
at 12, you get four. I do like 12. I, I like the fourth yeah. Heat Lance a lot. Um, the fourth Grav Talon, I think, are really big. But once you hit over 12, uh, 12 models, you know, you start suffering from Blast really bad. Uh, and I don't know what the right move is there. Yeah, I'm still there's a lot of stuff that it. likes to shoot Blast at two wound models. Yeah, I mean, the, the counter of that, though, is I don't care usually. My bikes are usually there to soak fire from my Raiders. Um, or my witches for me personally. So yep. if my bikes are getting targeted, I use the, the minus one to hit a uh, stratagem. Right. Yeah. I let them soak as much fire as possible. And at the end of the day, as long as my four bikes with the, the heat lances and the grab talons are still alive, that yep. unit is still putting out a ton of damage. I mean, you're still talking T5, right? We're going to make them T5. Yeah, now yeah, the question T5. is, do, do they go in turn one or do they go in turn two or can they wait? Till turn two with the raiders full of witches. I mean, that so me personally, like I said, my stratagem with them is, so I like my Hellions. I actually think my Hellions hit the hardest. Like I said, the Heat Lances is really why I'm bringing these bikes. So as long as they, I still have some of them alive with their Heat Lances and I can still shoot yeah. up a tank or shoot something and charge it and, and take it out. I personally like using their speed because they move, what, 18 inches. They can flat out another, was it eight? Eight, I believe. This yeah. is before the combat drums. This is just well, but I, I usually give the plus yeah. one strength combat drum. Right, yeah, yeah. But you could you could give it the extra two inches, I think, if you really wanted to. Yeah. I don't think you need it. But I mean you're moving what, twenty six inches? Yeah. Personally, I like throwing them out. If if there's something I can hide them behind, great. If not, I like throw them out there. They're the hey, shoot me, don't shoot up my other stuff. Yeah. Um because there's nothing worse than getting like your incubi raider shot up turn one or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I know. I know it's different target priorities for different weapons, but yeah, yeah of course. Uh, I usually try to make my my bikes and they're durable too. You know, you'd be surprised. They've they've taken a beating. Um, that toughness five, that minus one to hit. I think they have a four plus armor save. Um, yeah, I mean that's good. And, and now the, the the whole bike unit. I mean, they lost the six up ignore, but they all have the six up invulnerable. So. That's still yeah. something. Yeah, um, for sure. The T5 is going to just mitigate so much right off the bat. Yeah, That's where it, it's at. It That's going to be great. It does. Um, you stack that with a minus one. Like, you know, I play a lot of custodies too, and that's the base of the army. You know, I go, I, I play all infantry, and the whole army is T5 minus one to hit. It's yeah. so it's so frustrating. I mean, well, and these the guys move you, 20 some inches. Right. And, and, if, and if your opponent doesn't shoot them, and you have 12 oh, no. models and you can use the strat where, you know, you pass over a unit, they use their blade vines and, you know, they do mortal wounds on four plus. Yep. I mean, these guys are usually attacking whatever your opponent left in his backfield to hold some objective or just something that's hiding behind a building and they're killing it. You know, this is, this is taking out their artillery in the back, their, you know, their mortar teams, their wyverns, you know, I don't know what uh, I know. Uh, whirlwinds are a big thing right now. Space Marines like whirlwinds. Yep. You know, you're taking that yep. stuff out. I mean, if you take out like a Space Marines whirlwind, that's you know, they're depending on that for that strikes last. So. Oh yeah. Mm. I don't know. Stuff. I I really like the bikes. Uh, it, it's a hard sell. I got. We got to wait to see. I'm pretty sure the points are going to be the, the 20 points a model from the uh, chapter approved FAQ. Uh, right now it says they're ten. There's no way that's right. Uh, yeah. I, you know, surprisingly, I, for some reason, I was thinking that they'd be eighteen, like the Hellions, because to me that unit is so comparable in what they do with everything that I don't understand why a jet bike is twenty and a Hellion is um, is eighteen. Because I yeah. don't think it's two points more. I, personally, the movement of fourteen versus eighteen, so it's four inches more movement. But those Hellions have two damage on their glaives. And aside from that, know. they're basically the same unit, except for the bikers, you can pay extra for upgrades. So, Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, but, I don't know. Is, so that's what they were before? 20 points in chapter proved? Yeah, yeah, 20 points. Yeah. I wonder where 10 came from. Like, I guess it's just a typo, but like, it's kind of a weird typo. 20 to 10. I don't know. Well, Maybe they were copying because nothing else in the codex costs ten points. It's very I strange. Have, I think I have the chapter approved right here. Let me. No, we're due for an FAQ next week, right? 
Uh, yeah, probably, probably real soon. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure they'll cover it because they're not going to leave that sitting. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, I think this is the most recent one. Let me see here. Fast attack. Where are you? The Reavers. Oh, yeah. So, well, hmm. I don't think this is the newest one. That's all right. I'd have to pull it up, but I do know that um, the Grav Talons changed in points. So those those used to be three points, and now I believe they're five. So I, I don't know. You know, I yeah. I want to say that they're probably going to be 20 points. That's the way I've been pointing them in my games. But I, we really have to wait for the FAQ to see where, the, where this shakes down because, like I said, I, I think that some of those points are different than the – than the, the points that were released. But yeah, because stuff was rolled into other costs too. You know, like people were saying different different units, like, I don't know, gas terminators and a bunch of stuff. Like a bunch of gear disappeared from the list because it got rolled back into the points. And you couldn't tell – there was <laughs> they didn't tell us what the delta was. There was no – there's nothing to show us what it was before and after. So you don't know if they forgot a line or if they so – Yeah, all that I think, stuff. Uh, I think the assumption on a lot of that stuff is, right, if it's not listed, it's free. Um, I mean, that's what it should be, unless unless they forgot it. Yeah. <laughs> which you'll never know if they just forgot it. Which is fine. I mean, uh, again, a lot of that stuff is kind of interchangeable. It's just different tools for different uh, objectives, I yeah. guess. Yeah. It's, sometimes it's really hard to compare, like, hey, what's better, a, a flamer or a melt-a-gun, right? Yeah. They do different yeah. things. But, yeah, I mean, cool. that's, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about the – the succubuses. I mean, yeah. I could talk forever about witches and stuff, and we could go into army lists and builds and stuff. But yeah. I think this is fine. This yeah. is our pilot episode, or into this uh, podcasting business. So um, maybe we'll just wrap it up there for today. Yeah, it sounds sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, uh, once again, yeah, uh, I'm Austin. Uh, this has been. Uh, 40k shop talk i'm here with rob and uh i guess we'll leave it at that well, thanks for see y'all